I am now hitting record, and now I'm hitting the intro. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone reports the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Timmy! <laughs> and I'm mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to an early Porsche episode of our podcast. It's episode 356. We couldn't find anything better. And then when it was really obvious, but we had to. So the famous bathtub Porsche started production in 1948 in Austria. And after building roughly 50 cars, they shifted back to Germany, where production of the 356 continued until 1965, and it was sold side by side, its replacement, the 911. 76,000 of the lightweight rear engine cars were produced, with about half of those still around. The earliest versions used a 1.1 liter Boxster engine and made around 35 horsepower while the last version in 65 made 95 horsepower. The original price in 1948, $3,750, equivalent to about $48,000 today. So uh, none of us wow. can afford to have a 356, so we're not working on those. Um, so, but Metzl, what, what, my else? What, you have some crappy air-cooled Porsches that are worth I, about $3,750 today's dollars. I have, I have uh, uh, a dollars. crappy air-cooled yeah. Porsche, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I got rid of all the crappy water-cooled ones for now. For now, um, yep. And I have not worked on that crappy uh, air-cooled Porsche at all, so it's been great. Instead, I uh, got the Miata home. Uh, I got the air conditioner just in time for it to actually come into some use. And then I went to California for a car and came home. And then I went to California for work, and I came home. So that's what I've been working on. So you've been working on listening to podcasts in your Miata, basically. Yes, but not the Miata. Oh. In, in fact, uh, for the those who are, this is the new Mrs. Mental Mobile. This is the uh, Mercedes SL 500. I bought from the same kind individual who loaned me the uh, 911. It has 33,000 original miles, and it does everything a uh, old, big Mercedes is supposed to do. And I, I just feel so comforted. It's... <sighs> it's great. And you haven't, you know, any other seller, I would be warning you right now because of how complicated those cars are. But that guy, he's like buying a car for me. It's like, yeah, yes, it yes, is. I, I, I actually made that joke. You. He's, he's, he's more Chris than Chris. Uh, I've already got a log book of everything that was on it. Uh, tape over any part screw or anything that he replaced. And, you know, a, a, all uh, including the original, um, window sticker and everything on that car. It is immaculate. The tires still have the little nubs on them. And it's, I, I got the hard top, the convertible top, the little trolley for the hard top, which Vicky has no interest in taking off for the, the foreseeable future. It, uh, and it's, it was basically, I drove it from Oakland, like sitting in a Barco lounger, gobbling up freeway, the way that Mercedes was designed to just cross time zones. Yep. And the, I good. did the find a receipt you... for all of the convertible top servos were all replaced two years ago. That's what I was just about to oh. ask. Is the less you use the top, the less likely you're going to have a hydraulic fluid shower. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Sounds yes. like so much fun. <laughs> uh -huh. So, oh, so some, some, somehow mental can find like the best sellers in the world for Mercedes. <laughs> And the worst trailers on the planet. Like, yes. See, that's yeah, what like, happens. How does when that you, work? You you buy from someone whose name starts with a C. Chuck, Chris. These the, you're covered on this one. 
you buy or get trailers from someone whose name begins with a J. Janky. So. Or if you just happen to exchange trailers with a stranger on the side of the road at midnight, <laughs> I'm just gonna unlikely s- to go well. <laughs> I'm just gonna say his name began with a J. We're sticking with the. We're do sticking you with want the, the a moon trailer? Yes, I do. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Oh, yep. All right. Um, so, All right. or when you buy a car with a, or when you buy a car with a translator, that's always a bad thing. Ooh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Now, did you yeah. have to bring the translator? Or was the translator just like there? Or good question. He had his own. <laughs> okay, good. It was, yeah. a, it was a nine-year-old. A nine-year-old girl was a, a translator when I was trying to buy a lemons car one time. All right, I know this didn't happen this way, but in my head, she's sitting there, kind of like twirling back and forth, like you know, with her teddy bear, going, "You're breaking my balls. You're breaking my balls. I can't take that little for it." All right. Um, and I'll yeah. say this cause it'll be fun. Chris, what, are, what are you working on? Ha, yeah. I'm ah. just going to go first so I can do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've been working on my chainsaw, my Husk eighties Husqvarna 44. I had redone, cleaned it all out, redone the carburetor, had the wrong kit, put it back together. It just poured fuel everywhere. So I got the correct kit and I'll shout out to, um, discount outboard motor supply. They were on eBay, but they're in Michigan and they put together this fantastic kit for this wall bro carburetor that every single bit needed. It came with a parts diagram to show how it all went together. Very reasonably priced. Saw runs beautifully now, better than it's run in years and years and years. And then I proceeded to cut wood with it because what else would you do? Hold on. Right? It was Timber. kind of funny when you, when you finished the project <laughs> at 9 PM and we're going to run yeah. it then. Well, yes, I, I finished the saw. And I said, well, the only way I can run this at this time of night is if I go find that old hockey mask. And then I said, you know, my neighbors won't appreciate that. So uh, I shouldn't do that right now. Hey, guys, look, my saw works. I'm going to have a new hockey mask. Yay. That's big like that. So, Honestly, you, you shouldn't do that at 9. You should wait till about 1030, right when Chrissy's asleep. And so that you don't disturb the neighbors. Just do that in the bedroom. Hey, Chrissy, oh. look at my new hockey mask. I'll fix the chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great idea. And we wouldn't be together anymore. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he would be well. Nope. 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 Yeah, I would be the one getting injured in that scenario. Mm. Um, uh-huh. And that's, today I walk out of work to the Boxster and the back window, the glass back window was flopped down on the carpet above the engine. So... You know those Miatas with a zip-out window in the back? It's pretty much that, but a glass zipper. one and a Boxster. Right. So Minus the zipper. I'm figuring out how to put that in because the top has is is, is been recently replaced. It's in very good condition. I have to figure out how to glue that back in without taking the whole top off, if preferable. Um, and so because of that, the car is obviously not waterproof. So I needed to get in the garage, but the Mazda was in the garage. So tonight we had to move things around to get the Mazda in the trailer so I could get the Porsche in the garage. Yeah. Fun times. Anyway. I, when you started to tell that story, my nightmare was that someone like threw a rock at it and it shattered or something horrible. No, it was just sitting there. Fell it in. was 95 degrees today. And apparently that, that was all the glue had and it just went bloop down mm. into the well there. That's all. Yep. Cr- Chrissy, you can tell everyone what you're doing too. Oh, well, this weekend we saw some friends, uh, had to, had lots of booze, and that's about it. Did not work on cars. Yep, now we're staving off the heat, but it'll change tomorrow. So nothing interesting here. Tim, though, what are you doing? So I have uh, some friends in town from Florida, my buddy Dan and Sabrina. They were actually the couple that um, <clears throat> my wife and I, and my so uh, I'll backtrack. My wife and her friend Sabrina went on a ski trip that they won in a raffle for Christmas. I went on a ski trip where I got a call like two weeks before and said, hey, the guy that was supposed to go broke his ankle and uh, you can go for just the price of the transfer fee, which was like 150 bucks, like seven days, airfare, lessons, the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm in 100%. And then Dan 
who was a ski instructor for the company that was supposed to be in Canada and then got moved last second to Copper Mountain. Um, so, so Dan, the ski instructor, met Sabrina, a customer, and they hooked up. And I, a last second customer, met Amy, my now wife, and we hooked up and now we're married and now we're all hanging out. And that was in 2002. So they're here um, at the camp with us, hanging out. Wow. Very cool. That's a fun um, story. I, I, I need, if I knew that was coming, I need like one of those, the, the Instagram filters where they play the happy music and it just fixes into a heart right around your, you know, your, <laughs> your <laughs> face. <laughs> so very, so very, 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 very cool story. But Dan, bought a company, a HVAC company recently in Florida. So he and I went under the house um, to look at the HVAC at our place here, which was built in 1950. And as you can imagine, it's not amazing. So we, we spent a lot of time under there looking at rusty things and, and like, why, like, why do the pipes go that way? And like, what is that? What is that thing? <laughs> that's connecting these two things together. So we had a lot of a lot of fun time. Uh, I learned a ton about HVAC. So it was super fun, very cool. I've got a lot of work to do. Um, so that was it. No car work, sadly. Uh, but I do have the garage. My like epic garage build that I'm hoping to do should be starting in the next seven days. So very excited about that. Nice. Nice. All right. Listeners, you've already heard him talking. You've heard us refer to him. We have to be very specific because the voice you have heard is yet another Chris because you can't have enough Chris's. Tim's middle name is actually Chris, but he won't go by it. That's actually not true. What you have heard <laughs> is the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Overzet. He is our guest this week. And oddly enough, he is. Yeah, on the show in his shop. So, Chris, what you working on? Um, <laughs> trying to get I got a seventy two F one hundred with a twin turbocharged LS in it. So basically, I've been trying to get that thing running. So I've been I I, I love the casual thing. nature that you just threw. Every word in that sentence <laughs> was awesome, and you're just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Old F one hundred twin turbo those- LS. It's been like a five-year project, so I'm trying to get it done so that it, other way I can sell it and finish my uh, my dream car that's in the garage in the shop also, which is a 65 Chevelle with a LSA in it, a six-speed, which was actually built here in Fremont, like an hour from here. My buddy drove it in high school, and then uh, so it's been a California car its whole life. So I'm just finishing the Ford so I can sell it off to get the other one going. So that's awesome. Oh, and then, man. of course, keeping That's butter it. buttercup alive. So, is another project all the time. So, <laughs> and uh, initially, because we we had you scheduled to be on uh, a look not too long, but a little while ago, and in fact, Buttercup had gone to Radwood and then cooked your foot and broken down and got stuck in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So buttercup and we're going to talk about what is buttercup? I don't know. Erling, don't worry. We're going to explain what buttercup is. Just know that it is a car about the size of your bus. So should should we let, should we let Chris talk a a half a second about what he does for work and his business? That would be a good idea. I I had it saved for the main topic time, but yes. Um, well, we can say that. That's a teaser. I own a shop here in uh, Brentwood that basically makes trucks pretty. So basically, we do everything from 2024 20, Duramaxes on 40 inch tall tires all the way to quarter million dollar pre runners and uh, a bunch of. We're doing a lot of those overland stuff too. So we've got a bunch of the new tundras in here doing overland stuff to that. And we do a lot of airbags and towing stuff and just basically got. A lot of shops are scared of the big lifted trucks, so basically it's kind of my forte where I kind of can fix them without even looking at them half the time and find all the problems before it because nobody else wants to touch them. So 
But yeah, right now we have a, a 1500 horsepower free runner in the showroom. And then uh, my other, one of my mechanics or slash salesman's got his dad's original truck that we raced in uh, Vegas Arena in 96. So he saw his son got it and he's restoring it. And we're probably going to race it like this next, by the end of this year. So it's going to be pretty cool. But yeah, we do a lot of big truck stuff. Basically, make stuff cool. Sounds oh, fantastic. Make stuff cool. Make yeah, stuff yeah. cool. Speaking of cool stuff. Is it news and news time? Yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you been wondering where all the classic cars have gone? James Gilboy from The Drive has a hunch. It either seems like there are fewer classic salvage yards with each passing year. Either they gradually close or liquidate or their stock rots too much uh, for parts to be recovered. But a vast battalion, a bestalia, best, whatever it is, of old, well-preserved Bastion. American iron, ba- what? Bastion? Bastion. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Well-preserved American iron cars can still be found, found mm. in Arizona. How vast? More than 10,000 cars in total, plenty of which are still re- in restorable condition. This morgue of american automotive history was recently toured by youtube user remote trooper who captured aerial <laughs> and ground footage uh, at desert valley auto parts founded back in 1993 the family-owned business has been continually acquiring cars ever since with a predominant focus on american cars from 64 and earlier in fact its stock has become so vast that the company's website says the inventory isn't even entirely cataloged or sorted and that made it made tougher uh, that's made tougher by how many long dreaded, long dead brands, just as, such as DeSoto, are resem- re- represented there. Nevertheless, Remote Trooper finds the finds while walking through the neatly arranged rows that are roughly organized by make. The video barely gets past the General Motors section al- uh, alone before Arizona Heat forces the host to retreat to his car before noon. A long outing might have uh, allowed for some. Some old good dashboard baking uh wh- but while this environmental is to- this environment is, a- is hostile oh hi uh it's surprisingly accommodating for the cars themselves there are dozens of complete restoration ready cars plus there are some that are partially complete feasibly feasibly they could be saved with enough effort and other car parts and while arizona sun set uh, sear off any clear coat and paint dry climate means rust is minimal and the sheet metal is generally good i'm uh, showing you some pictures if you're watching but take a look at the drive article to look at all of these cars there's so many they go on for miles there's so many we have my smiles and smiles of cars <laughs> yeah all right i did so actually many. so far in the video i did notice a two-door impala and also one of those uh, oldsmobile tornado rv you know homes which you know probably interests me more than any reasonable person should be interested hmm all right, uh, fair. Tim. I shamelessly fair, dumped fair. the next one onto you so I could do the the video. <laughs> I'm happy to do it. So Amber DeSalva at Jalopnik tells us about how a Lambo owner can't afford a fine for an exhaust note. Usually, when a supercar owner gets themselves into dumb trouble, it's a chance for us to all come together and point and laugh. Speeding tickets, aquatic adventures. We love to see a rich asshole lose. But one Staten Island Lamborghini owner ticketed for his Huracan Performante exhaust noise actually has a point in claiming the ticket is unjust. Anthony Aquilano, <clears throat> supercar enthusiast, got a ticket for excessive noise in his Huracan Performante while driving through Manhattan. He claims the $800 fine, will, which will increase for repeat offenses, is unaffordable and unreasonable. While that claim <clears throat> that someone who owns a six-figure supercar can't afford an $800 ticket is laughable, the argument that the ticket is unreasonable holds water. His car, as you see, is bone stock, and if a car sold with a factory exhaust with a full approval of it, all necessary regulatory bodies, it's really not, not reasonable to go ticketing that car for being too loud without aftermarket mods. If you want quiet cars, you're welcome to, but that regulation should happen long before a car can possibly make it to the buyer. New York has recently cracked down on loud vehicles. 
with the SLEEP Act providing additional enforcement for pre-existing noise limits, either by decibel level or by distance from the vehicle at which the exhaust is audible. That law, however, doesn't seem to account for whether a car is stock or modified. It's possible to buy a vehicle off the showroom floor and immediately receive a ticket stating that car, as sold to you, is not legal to operate in the city of New York. Go to the link for Jalopnik. That is BS. And we talked about this a few months ago because it was a similar person in an unmodified Porsche 911 got dinged with one of these. But I, I hopefully the guy that can afford a Lamborghini uh, Uracon Super Permonte can also afford a lawyer just to start stirring up enough trouble. I, I also read an article about a guy in a, in a, uh, in a Hyundai that he had the performance model and the, the cop impounded the car because. Oh, yeah, that was, was like a in California per- in model. Yeah, in- permanently disabled, permanently disabled from the factory, the track option. We will we will impound the car and tow it. Yeah, they uh, suspended his registration. He ended up having to sell that car. Yeah, yeah. Tom- ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Some people normally just normal people just want to have fun, but then they ruin all of the stupid people ruin it for the normal people. Yes, and I just you mean I love, people oh, like we'll a rotary a, we'll RX seven. We'll make a law, and we it'll make that. it all better. And I I've pointed out before, you know, I live half a block from a four way stop sign that you know guys with straight pipe Nissan Zs love to do second gear pulls at three in the morning. All right, I'm I am on the side of pipe Harleys. Come on. Yeah, exactly. I am on the side of you kids and your dumb racket. But if you if the federal government says the car is fine, the car is fine. This is the time to get the chainsaw and mask out. (laughs) This is a lead in lead into the next topic, which is how many of us as judges will force anybody with a rotary RX seven to shut their car off before they go into penalty. Raise your hand. All of yeah, us. That's, that's 100%. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Hey, you know where you can get one of those? Rotary RX-7 <laughs> racingjunk.com. Weird. We found this 1983 RX-7 race car <clears throat> for four grand. Ready to race, 83 RX-7, former SCCA race car with logbook, full high-quality roll cage, but we'll need some modifications to meet lemon specs. Runs very strong, shifts smoothly, comes with spares, including a set of 13-inch lightweight wheels, transmission, and differential gear set. Here's a brand new and and installed with no use 15 by 7 lightweight wheels with new tires, fuel pump, fuel drain, and tank clean and coated with a nice coating, uh, new fuel filter, carb rebuilt, idle arms, alignment, much more. There's receipts, there's pictures. It does need a harness because it's out of date. And they don't know the mileage, which, I mean, that's a deal breaker right there. <laughs> but it looks like they also bought the premium version because they've got lots of pictures. You can see the they cage did. has got nice door bars that go out into the doors pretty well. It uh, it looks like a pretty good design. Actually, the inside of that car is really, really clean. Yeah. Yeah. And we've pointed this out before. Do you know who got their start in racing in a Spec RX-7? That's our John Pagel. So he'll walk you right through whatever camera mods you have to give to uh, make that thing work. It'll be great. So check that out. Check it at the link in our show notes. It's, uh, I remember that Brandon Cross used to ban the rear axles on those RX-7s. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah, how and why do you they bend They would literally like, put it in a press and bend the axle through they would bend it to get camber. like two degrees of negative camber, and then they'd have to change yeah. all the wheel bearings on the wheel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the rear of the solid axle. Ah, there you go. See, yeah. you get the way. recommendation of the car and the speed secrets right here. This is news you can use. Out engineering yeah. the engineers. Well done, boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't need no engineering. I got to press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm coming right. There are none, but there's plenty none. of September, so we're totally going to be back in. There's like every weekend. There's car. There's race cars. Yep. Yes. But recent results. Well, 28 cars took the green flag at Champ Cars 12 hours at Thompson. Overall, in Class C was the Bogle Legacy Motorsports, and in 1988 Porsche, 
they were 19 laps over the next car in class, but only 39 seconds over the A-class winner of Misco Sport, uh, Motorsports driving a 94 Miata. Class B was lack of integrity with an 01 Integra, who was also third overall. The Boston Winers, love those guys, took fifth overall and F-class win with the Rustang Renegades and a 94 Mustang, taking D-class and eighth overall. Well done. Well done. Can I say something? <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Come on. No. I'm waiting for. Oh, oh this... listen, okay, that time. I thought you were <laughs> going to comment on. I thought you were coming on the race. We were trying yeah. to. I, I was waiting hurry. for Chrissy to, to call it's the next listen, segment. Back time. <laughs> right. Adam Nwoki of FOMOCO fame showed us this: the Don Joy Iceman Clear Three. Adding, this might be the cookie making cool shirt you've been looking for, but I would argue it's a great little track asset right before getting into or out of the car. He said that when, quote, the ever patient Mrs. Naraki had knee surgery, it plugs right into my ultra chiller cool shirt. So it's like a little tiny cool shirt cooler thing. With okay. a host. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like the cool shirt host. It actually comes with it. It's $118. How much? 118 bucks. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a that's a heck of a deal. Uh, yeah. All right. So he added that for the paddock, one of our teammates built a lunchbox sized cooler with a bilge pump power by Milwaukee M12 battery pack that is just slick. <laughs> and on the Facebooks regarding our last episode, DJ914 offered that in endurance racing, a cool shirt is a safety item. Great info. I do agree. Moot Point Racing also noted that it was good info, and if they keep their procrastination to a minimum, they will have their system done just in time for Loudon, which is in New Hampshire, in the fall. Right when you do, yep. which sometimes if they get winter, it done, like yeah. <laughs> actually winter. Sometimes you need a warm when you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're not laughing at you; we are laughing in sympathy. Yep. Uh, so we posted up some fun picks and Mental's new R129 SL500 got some reactions along with the Instagram story of him getting it. But when he posted a picture of his electric skateboard, Al Jones says, I can't wait to bid on it at my local airport auction. <laughs> 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 oh, shoot. All right. I posted up uh, a little while ago about the beach cart. We said 1.5. 1.2. 1.2. Two. Sorry. Eric K said, nice will the 2.5 Mazda motor fit in as a as well. Long block, long block only, of course. Uh, you can fit those in anything. The uh, okay. Uh, on the YouTubes, uh, the ever helpful Michael K gave us this. Consider flushing cool shirt with the brewing and dairy sanitizer star sand. It's very mild acid, acid that does not affect the tubing, fitting, pumps, etc. Unless mild steel, that is not anyone uses a galvanized steel cooler fitting. Heck, I might mix in a five-gallon batches of sanitizing brewing equipment, and it lasts for thir about three to six months. I use five gallons of old stuff as our cool seat water. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right. That is interesting. I have a bunch of that from brewing beer. I might have to think about that. Uh huh. Ooh, hey, heck yes. Yeah, uh, bring some of that to uh, cool out my shirt when I see it uh, mm -hmm. here in a couple weeks. Mm hmm. And at It's Probably Fine said, Gray is a theme and attributed that to Chrissy's mom. Thanks, Chrissy's mom. <laughs> You're right. There you go. <laughs> and finally, the same person, different comment, helpfulness. Michael K., uh, who was binging us on his epic motorcycle ride through the northern half of the U.S., said, quote, a steep learning curve for me on buying a tractor was narrowing down the specific weights and capacities you need. I narrowed it down to a 1,000-pound lift on the FEL and 1,200 or 1200 pounds lift on the three point plus specific to me. And it was able to fit through a six foot gate with a belly mower on it. FEL lift capacity was about the ability to lift a drive train from a truck bed to the ground and back again, because that lift capacity is rated at the bucket pivot pen. So he was giving Chris helpful tips as he looks into his next fall project 
of tractor selection and maintenance. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, Chrissy. Thanks. That's so much. <laughs> Chrissy wants her hot tub and patio done, so that's I do. I do. I do. And uh -huh. if a tractor makes you that excited, then let's get a tractor. I just well, I think the tractor is going to help bring the hot tub. You could actually get it off the delivery truck with the chain if he's got the right FEL and then set it into the deck that he's going to build. I got I to gotta flatten things out around here first. Which yeah. also a tractor is good for. Well, there we know. That's, that's why we're getting it. Yes. Great. You know who else is always full of helpful tractor advice? <laughs> she will be once we have a tractor. <laughs> you know who else's life is going to be improved when Chris invariably selects the perfect tractor that he needs? Yes. You know who else is able to fit through a six-foot gate with a belly mower on? <laughs> 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 long as it's gray yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. okay that would be that would be chrissy's mom and and chris you have not had an opportunity to sample chrissy's mom's cookies because i don't think you've done anything in on the east coast or the northeast so that the next time these two come out for a west coast race you'll you, you will understand the cult of chrissy's mom I think I tried okay, to bring yeah. some out the one time we were out for, I don't know, but, well, but well, truck, truck yeah. yeah, I don't know that they made it anywhere around the paddock. I think they probably only got devoured in the, in the paddock. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Cause I was there. Yep. <laughs> Agreed. All right. It's big topic time. Yep. All right. You have seen, probably seen Chris Overzet in his many creations in the wrap up videos. You may have chatted with him in penalty. It's possible you've seen him and Buttercup, the 1972 Lincoln, or what year is Lincoln? 75. 75 Lincoln, 75 Lincoln Town Car Coupe. That is tw continental, 20 yeah. some odd feet I long. <laughs> it's awesome. You may have seen it at a West Coast Cars and Coffee, Radwood, and most recently, he won Worst of Show at the Concourse de Lemon held in conjunction with Pebble Beach. Um, if you don't do a lot of West Coast stuff, you, maybe you don't know him, but you should. And Chris, give us the 30-second elevator pitch of Chris Overzet. He's thinking. Um, geez, 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, he already told somebody. <laughs> Basically, He's I kind of fell into lemons and uh, kind of been a, I think I lost one marriage because of lemons, but I mean, it's been a, adventure since the beginning it's just i don't know lemons is just part of my life now and it's crazy just uh i love just seeing people's reaction when i'm driving my stupid uh flutter cup and going to car shows and letting kids sit on it and i just i'm a big goofball when it comes to that stuff so I like making people smile and Buttercup certainly does. Buttercup is the 75 Lincoln Continental two-door covered in fur with a horse on the top. And I, I failed to prepare. Ten, ten year old fur. <laughs> <laughs> I failed to prepare ahead of time and have pictures of this available, but we will figure that one out uh, we'll as we later. are working no, Chris, up through this. Yeah. Chris, you've had a lot of other great lemons cars over the years that I off the top of my head, aside from a whole fleet of various Hondas um, where, you know, you and I were on the same page with all those. Uh, I remember the limousine, the Titanic limousine yep. that w wouldn't fit on the flatbed at, at the, uh, when it got towed off. The, that was hilarious. It made, it made the tow truck do a five foot wheelie when it came off track. Yep. Funny, <laughs> wasn't, yeah. it, wasn't that the last limousine they allowed in lemons? It was the only, that limousine was, it was so funny. I, I, I was looking on Craigslist and I see this lim limousine. I'm like, wait a minute, that phone number looks familiar. And it was a guy that owed me money. So all of a sudden I show up to <laughs> look at this limo and I, <laughs> And I, I go to, I ask Jay, I call Jay up on his phone. I'm like, can I race a limo? And he's like, how long is it? I go, hold on. And so I go and measure, I'm like 27 feet. And he's like, uh, yeah, let me call Peggy. I'll call you back. And so he, I'm sitting there talking to my buddy. And then all of a sudden, uh, Jay said, he goes, sure, you can do it. And I'm like, all right. So then I go to my buddy. I'm all, well, here's 300 bucks. So 300, I wanted a thousand. I go, you owe me 800 bucks. And he's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's like, all right. So I got, I got that big ass limo for, or $300, so it was pretty funny, or 1000 basically. But yeah, it was a 
it was a that thing was hilarious it was so much fun that i mean i got so much junk out of the inside of that car i got what a 1941 nazi nickel minted in berlin i sold that in uh, on ebay for a 100 bucks there was a i mean i think all the stuff you find in a lemon's car is it's like that'd be a whole show in its own i mean there's so much crazy stuff there was like a a 3x thong in there there was a wedding there was a wedding certificate from niagara falls there was a uh, a green card from juan garcia that was in the car there was so much stuff in that car when I pulled it apart. It was hilarious. But yeah, the limo was probably one of the funniest stories that I, of any of the car. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I have hundreds of stories. But like, yeah, I can go on forever. But yeah, if, uh, another <laughs> my first lemons car I got. And my buddy calls me up and goes, "Hey, get it." He shows me the lemons website two weeks before the first race in '07. And so he goes, "I got a Jetta. I'm going to build." I'm like, "All right, I'll go find a Jetta." So I go online and I find a Jetta. So I go out to Oakland to get this Jetta, and it was like off India Industrial. Tim knows where that is. It's a really great part of town. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm, so, Amazing. So I'm sitting there. Amazing. Yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's like yeah. So I'm talking to this girl, and she doesn't have the keys, doesn't have a title, doesn't have a registration, can't even get in the car. And I'm like, how do I know this is yours? And then this cop pulls up and goes, and of course, uh, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm gonna try to buy this car from this girl, and he's all. Can you run her uh, name so I can see if it's her car? And he's like, yeah, sure. So the cop punches his numbers in, and he goes, so-and-so. And she's like, yeah. He's like, all right. He goes, yeah, that's her car. Um, and I'm going to give you a five-minute head start, and then I'm going to go look for you. And she's like, uh-oh. She's all, he's all, you got two warrants. Start running. And all of a sudden, the girl <laughs> like, looks at me, and I'm like, she's all, oh, can I have the 400 bucks? I'm all 300. She's like, I go, it's going to be 200 in a second. She's like, fine, I'll take the 300. And she ran. And then all of a sudden the cops took off and chased her. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was like the, and then I get home and I'm like, oh, these Volkswagens aren't bad. Then I was like, I had a dented oil pan. Well, I took the oil pan off and the whole bottom half of the engine came off with the oil pan. Oh. I was like, oh, that's not good. So then I found a, a that's when I got my first little 88 Civic. I bought it for my friend, and I bought it. He, I told him, I go, take the interior out of it, and then I'll give you this much for it. And he's like, okay. And then I built that car in like a week and a half right before the, the July of uh, 07 race. That was the first Honda that I had. But, yeah, the, yeah, that was uh, – the stories of buying Lemons cars are classic. I mean, they're hilarious. Right, I've so had a, the lesson learned here, dear listener, is if you're negotiating – don't be under pursuit because it doesn't give you a lot yeah. of back and forth time. Oh God, yeah. that is, that may be the funniest thing I've ever heard about buying a lemons car. It's going to be 230 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, uh, I got like, uh, there's, like I said, a crazy Mike went with me and I found a, what was it? A, the Daewoo, the uh, Laganza. I found it on uh, Craigslist and I go, Hey, I go, crazy mike i go can you go with me to go look at this car and he's all where's it at i go it's in sack and he's all oh we're in this part of town i'm all is that a bad part of town and he's like oh yeah and i'm like oh great can you come with me and he's like sure and then crazy mike he's he's a big guy too say, so we go to get you're, to this you're six six four what, what are you you're six three and yeah six, three. crazy mike's I, about the same as me but yeah mike's so about we, six four six five yeah <laughs> yeah so we pull up to this car and i, I see the Lagans out there and i i'm looking around it and all of a sudden, this kid comes out of the house, and he's like, probably, the, and he has a blanket around him. He's all, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm looking at this car. I'm going to buy it. He's all, why? And I'm all, because Reggie said I wanted, I can buy it. And he's telling me that he'd be in a few minutes. He's all, uh, I don't know why you're, uh, uh, wait a minute. And then all of a sudden, he like, I, I grabbed the phone, and uh, Reggie, I'm talking to Reggie on the phone, and I hand it to this kid. And then all of a sudden, the kid runs off, and he gives me my phone back. And I'm all, what would you do? He's all. Well, I told him to go back to bed. And I was like, okay. And then now, like, 20 people came out of the house. And they're all standing around me and Mike. And then Mike takes off to go get a starting fluid for me. And I'm like, oh, great. So I'm standing there. And then finally Reggie shows up. So we're looking through the gonza. Started off some starting fluid. And then it ran. And I'm like, okay, cool. I go, what do you want for? He's like, 420, man. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Here's, four, here's 420 bucks. And then all of a sudden, as I'm. He's off. Can we clean out all the recycling before you take it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So he's pulling all this stuff out of the car. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, 
I see the uh, fuel fuel button, fuel reset button, and I push it, and I was like, huh. And then the car started right up, and the guy's all, hey, man, it's running. I go, oh, that's just leftover starting fluid. And he had, like, a Mickey <laughs> bottle stuck, stuck up against the, uh, the uh, fuel pump reset switch. And then uh, we drugged the car on the trailer, and then it was like, yeah, it was a, that was a sketchy one, too. But, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like when we bought the truck, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it became something. the boat. Yes. Uh Wow. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, we're already off to a good start here. Um, You're right. <laughs> now, Chris, for a long time, you, you used to bring a fleet of cars, basically, to the track. You had your, your F950, whatever it was, with the giant yeah. trailer with a bunch of things on it. I had seven cars at one race by myself, and I prepped them all by myself. It was complete insanity. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like that that feels two. like some sort yeah. of time. self-loathing. And I had like a... Like an 85 percentile of finishing all the races. That was the crazy part about it. I don't know how I did that, but I hardly had any DNFs. I just had dumbass drivers getting all black <laughs> flagged out before the race was over. No, no DNFs, yeah. just a lot of DADs. Yeah, dumbass drivers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I said I had. I mean, the amount of drivers I've had, and how many? It's like you know when you go and you're you're scrolling through all the people you may know when you're in. Uh, Signing up for a race. Well, you know how it scrolls at the bottom of like the people that might have been in your car. I mine goes like for eight or nine pages. It's like probably seven hundred people have driven in my cars. I'm like, oh wow, remember that guy? It was like. Then some of them, I'm like, nope, never again. It's like I've, uh, I've warned other drivers, don't drive with that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's yeah. like, uh, God, what was it? The, well, I had a guy. A guy with a car came in. He went on the track. I mean, basically, I, I tell everybody when you, whenever you do, a, a, you're interviewing drivers, you ask them if they have PayPal. Um, how tall are you, and do you have PayPal? That's all you need to know about a driver. And he's like, okay. So the guy had PayPal, gets in my little flat, my little Honda, comes back after 30 minutes, gets a black flag, and then all of a sudden I look and there's cords, tire, cords, cords. He flat spotted three different sections on all four tires, like brand new tires. So I'm like. What'd you do? And he's all, uh, I don't think uh, none of your ABS and any of your auto car nanny stuff's not working on the car. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, you think this thing would actually have that stuff? And he's like, well, my car does. And I'm like, well, what are you driving? He's all, that guy Ardo over there. And I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like, I go, well, look, now you're going to go buy four new tires. So he grabbed four tires and bought four tires at Sonoma on a Saturday of race day. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Because uh, otherwise, we're caging guy. the Gallardo, and we're going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, some of the arrive, arrive that either, drivers, actually. The arrival drives are hilarious. I mean, just the stuff that they come up with is just like, really? It's like, yeah. Uh, so, so public safety announcement. If you are going to bring an arrive and drive on your team, call over Zet. And go through his database and get some notes on him because <laughs> chances are he, he's driven with him before and yeah. he will give you some really good information. Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. And, and if he says he sucks, take his, take his word for it. All right. Oh. Uh, so uh, just on that, you're, you're talking smack with the, the, you're the guy with the Gallardo. And this was one of the stories you threw out there. So it was like, tell us the YouTube story thing. Uh, uh, with cars with cars, cars, by, cars by Constance. Constance. That was a funny one. So, I mean, as everybody knows, everybody that shows up from like any of those like reality TV. Oh, we oh, just lost your microphone when uh, your your headphones yeah. were set there. There it goes. All right, you're back. Yeah. So any anytime anybody from like YouTube or any of those people, they all they're horrible car preppers. They don't know what they're doing. So I'm sitting there and this girl cars by constant. She's also on that Rust to Wrist Riches show. She's a, I mean, she's a hot looking chick, but yeah. So she's a <laughs> so she basically has this Sebring and they made it look like a shark or something. And so I'm, I'm going in there and she's at uh, we're at Buttonwell and we're going to go do the, a drive or the track day or on 
Friday, which I never test ever. And then all of a sudden, uh, I go, you guys actually racing? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh. She's like, why are you being that way? And I'm like, well, usually you D2 people don't make it that far. And she's like, what are, you, what are you saying? I'm like, I'm saying that I'll bet you 100 bucks that I'll get more laps than you tomorrow. And she's like, no, no, that's fine. And then I'm like, whatever. And so I'll, so we went out and tested. And I had a little Subaru that I just built. And it was the, the tool. It was covered with uh, vaping stuff. And I had snowboards all over it. And so we go out <laughs> on track. And we literally went like, I think, two laps. And all of a sudden, the temp gauge buries. The oil temperature buries. And all of a sudden, it's just like not running. <laughs> so I like I had enough speed where I coasted all the way into my paddock space and then I parked and then I'm basically the motor was toasted and I'm like, oh shit. So all of a sudden as I'm looking at the motor, that constant girl comes up, she's all I'll take that bet now for a hundred bucks and I'm like, Oh, with my broken car and I'm like, All right, if you want to do it and she's like, Okay. So then I uh I talked to a buddy of mine and I'm like, uh, we need an engine and he's like, Okay and I'm like, Well where are we gonna get one? I'm like well, it's got to be one in L.A. So we, like, call our friend up who's driving up from L.A. I'm all, hey, how far are you? And he's all, it's over here. Now, can you turn around and go to Long Beach and pick up a motor? He's all, dude, I'm in my, he's all, I'm in my wife's brand-new Camry. And I'm like, just take all the stuff out of the back of the trunk, and every it'll fit in there, I promise. And he's like, all right. So he shows up at, like, 10 o'clock at night with a Subaru EJ25 in the back of his wife's brand-new Camry with all the carpet from the trunk was in the back seat so we like grabbed it pulled it out put the motor in there and then uh got it ready started started the race and then i i locked i pulled up right up to uh constance and i saw her and i'm like still good for the 100 bucks she's like yeah and i'm like all right and then i think they went 17 miles and they left i, like, I need to yeah. i need to know how much was the engine uh eleven hundred and ninety five dollars <laughs> Oh yeah. no! <laughs> yeah, but you oh, won no. the bet, and she still hasn't paid you. No, yeah. I, 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 I have to say, it. I like your the voice that you use for this lovely chick. It <laughs> sounds, I'm sure, just like her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, oh. but yeah, I was like, but yeah, she took off, so she. I, I was there to like stalk her on Instagram and say, you owe me a hundred dollars. The, the better it's off like dead kid $2. on the bicycle. You owe me two dollars. You owe me two dollars. Two dollars. Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> right, if if we yeah, ever find I, out she's coming back, that's going to have to be somebody's theme. Two oh, yeah. dollars. Well, it's like for the longest time, anytime uh, Jay had, Jay was basically, he would pawn off every single TV show person on me. He's all, Hey, Chris, yeah, you want a free entry? And I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? And he's all, can you babysit this uh, TV crew for the weekend? And I'm like, so we don't have to see him and bug him? I'm, I'm like, okay. So he would give me free entries, then I'd babysit some uh, YouTuber people or whatever, some blogging people for the weekend and stuff like that. But it was a, yeah, it was a constant, always getting those uh, those people because Jay didn't want to deal with them. No, I, uh, yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, were there any of them that didn't suck what's that any of the tv youtubers camera crews that didn't suck um well i did the car show that those guys were pretty cool uh matt fair and all them dan neal and stuff that was that was funny because uh everybody shows up and adam carolla's there and we're like uh we're all standing by the car and we're kind of bantering with each other like like we've known each other for like 20 years everybody's talking shit to everybody and all of a sudden uh Every, uh, we all reach in to do like a hand together thing. And all of a sudden Corolla's like, Hey man, your hands are dirtier than Sally's and he's black. And I'm like, yeah, you wouldn't know where working hands were anymore. Anyways, Corolla. He, like, <laughs> that didn't make it on the show. <laughs> like, yeah. It was a, yeah. Corolla was funny. I'm like, I go, and he didn't even race the next day. I guess he had a lead to do something. I'm like, what do you have? He goes, I got a book signing. I go, is anybody going to buy that book? And he's like, Maybe. And I'm all, did you bring any books here? And he's all, no, because probably nobody here at Lemons can read. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, it's funny. So when when, uh, when Corolla gets in the car, I had the roof of the car had a big giant penis center, painted underneath it. And you had to look up and it says, don't be like this. And it had big arrows all inside the car that pointed to the big giant penis. Oh, okay. And it was like, like a really graphic penis with like fur on it and everything. And uh, <laughs> my buddy was like, 
And so uh, Corolla looks up and he's all, "Oh, that's some nice art you have there." But he's he's just he's a very mellow, dramatic guy. It's not very enthusiastic, but yeah, it's a. It was a that that show was pretty cool. To, um, yeah, that one they had a uh, they had an intern girl, this little hot blonde girl that was, was like carrying all the batteries, like ten batteries, and she's flopping around and she's like about to drop them all and stuff like that. And she's like, "Hey, we need this stuff or this." I'm like, "Look, honey, you're a hot chick, and there's a hundred and fifty nerdy geeky guys here at Lemons. You can ask them for anything, and they will bring it to you." And she's like, okay. So she like walks off, and all of a sudden, she has like five guys following her, carrying her batteries for her. It's pretty classic. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, and then the next day, uh, before we blew the car up with the uh, tannerite and explosives, they wanted all the windows broken out. So I had her come over, and I'm like, here, you want to beat up the car? She's like, why? I mean, you can think about all those guys that make you carry their batteries. And so she starts wailing on the car with a hammer and stuff. She's like, then this guy does this, and this guy does that. And she was just getting all her frustrations out on the whole film crew. So it was kind of funny. And then I saw, uh, like, four years later, I saw she was, like, she messaged me off uh, Facebook that she was, like, uh, doing some kind of other, like, documentary stuff or something. So she actually made it through her, her internship and was somewhat successful, I guess. Oh, excellent. Maybe she doesn't okay. make the, you know, person carry all the batteries. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. There was also a, the, I had the buried life. It was that a. Uh, reality show these guys from canada were getting like uh, had a list called the buried life where they had all these different bucket list things they wanted to do so they showed up to uh button willow and i had the my little wagon man that was like barely together and i had a uh, pago bring it down for a spare and also these guys are all yeah we want to be in a race car and i'm like well you can take this one and they're like oh okay and then they took off <laughs> they basically drove my car for the like two hours on Saturday and then came back and I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, Nick's all, do you have a car they can borrow? And I'm like, all right. But yeah, those guys are pretty cool. But yeah, there's a, uh, most of the, most of the, yeah, a lot of those YouTube people or the, all the, they're kind of a, uh, it's not so reality, reality TV show stuff's kind of funny. And you've had to cobble a lot of stuff back together after other people have break it, broken it. In a whole variety oh, yeah. of ways. Get, what what are some uh, what's a good heroic fix kind of story of something you were able to piece back together in one way or another? I've only had I've actually only got one heroic fix after all my races, and I was at a we're in Miller, and I uh, I basically I drove up there with uh, Crazy Mike, and we uh, took the, my little topless Honda, my little crappy car I've had forever. We took that, and all of a sudden I'm. We're driving on the course, and I see Brian Shorey's Alfa Romeo in front of me, and I'm looking, and every time he's going around corners, the front wheels are changing caster and camber by about eight degrees. Like, both front tires are flopping back and forth, and I'm, like, watching it as I'm going around corners, and all of a sudden we get back to the paddock that night, and all of a sudden I, like, walk over and grab his tire and shake it, and all of the spot welds were all broken in the whole front half of the car. So I'm like, ugh, that's not good. So basically, I found a welder in the paddock and then walked around and I was trimming pieces of metal off the inside of people's doors and whatever pieces and like asking people, hey, can I have this piece of metal? I would cut it off and then weld it on his car. <laughs> you gonna you gonna you gonna use that? You gonna eat that? Can I have that? Yeah. Oh crap, that? that's only cardboard. No. I, I yeah. need, you the, I need your the metal. <laughs> can I borrow that? And then I was like wow. that was a, that was the same Yeah. I may not give it back no, actually. That was the same one where uh, Bob Harburger uh, used that. Uh, he did the bowling with the uh, skateboard, like shooting across the whole uh, garage, and did ran into the, all the gas cans like he was bowling. That was that wasn't one of the uh, lemons in a nutshell at the very end. Yes, yeah, I, I, so I'm that was a away. Uh, pre-stunt yeah. and exploding antic, I believe. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I was like welding away, and all of a sudden I turn around and I look, and here goes Bob going by it like. 10, 15 miles per hour laying on a skateboard runs into all these gas cans at the end of the uh, garage area. It's hilarious. <laughs> that was, uh, that, yeah. that was also, uh, that was Bob's first. He had that little Renault, like the car that they got V6 or something in the back. And, uh, uh was it Frank rocket ship showed up and he's like six foot eight. And I guess he was supposed to drive in Bob's car. And then I walked over to Bob. He's all, I got a problem. I'm like, what is it? He's all, I got an arrive a drive problem. I'm all what's that? I go, 
oh, you forgot the three rolls of arriving drives. You go, what's that? I go, do you have PayPal? How tall are you? And do you have PayPal? He's all, yeah, I forgot the second one. And so I basically, so he looks at me and I'm like, well, I can help you with this problem. And he's like, what? He goes, I will trade you my five foot eight driver for your six foot seven driver if they want to swap. And he's like, okay. Wow. So rocket ship walks over and jumps into topless and fits in there with no problem. And he was like, all right, that fits better. So basically I swapped drivers at a race for, uh, just so that Bob could uh, have a successful I, I, weekend. So. I, th- I think that's the subtitle of this episode. Do you have PayPal? How tall are you? And do you have PayPal? Okay. <laughs> totally. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So, so, so Chris, you, you, you've been doing this back since the Altamont days. Um, yeah. It's evident July by your, your original, your OG tattoo of the 24 yep. hours of lemons, like first, first generation logo. Um, so you, you had a, you had a really later. good one. <laughs> totally. It's like, Hey, check out my new tattoo. Uh, They're like, Oh, oh check out our new logo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Shows oh, your OG. Oh. We get it. <laughs> all right, wait, hang, hang on. Hang on. What do, do that? I, I have to, I have to get this. That's, that's, that's going to be the thumbnail. And I just need to get the uh, screen capture of this one here. E- Perfect. Yeah. All right, keep going. <laughs> That's one awesome. one week later, they changed the logo. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> True lemon <laughs> so, style. Right there. Uh, so you had you had a really good story about ratchet straps back when the series raced at Fernley. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, so uh, this arriver, one of my drivers, he's been driving me with three years. Comes in, it's like probably seven or eight hours into a twenty-four hour race at Fernley, where it was snowing and raining and stuff. It was a great race. And so he pulls in and he's all, hey, there's something wrong. And I'm like, what do you mean something's wrong? And he's like, watch this. And he all of a sudden, because I saw him go by on the track and I'm all, where are all those sparks from? And he like sparks all over the place. And little, uh, I think it was my little 90 CRX, the one with the lemon demolition that had the stacks on it. So he comes in and I'm like looking at it and he goes, watch this. And he like grabs the shifter and dropped it. And he went, Bunk. and it fell through the floor and like hit the ground. It's like, huh. So basically he was driving the car while holding the shifter up as he was going around the track. And then he came in. Oh. And so basically we, we pulled it up and it broke the back transmission mount. And so we oh. grabbed ratchet straps and wrapped them all around that to uh, one of those $39 strut braces from uh, eBay and strapped the motor up and raced it for another like 16 hours after that. <laughs> but literally it was like, it's no problem at all. Oh yeah. I no, said, it's fine. I'm I've, fine. Uh, Everything's fine. I stole uh, one of the a shifter out of one of my drive and drives cars. He was like, we had a Subaru and we broke the shifter. And so I went over to his brand new nice STI and I stole his shifter out of it without telling him. <laughs> so all of a sudden that <laughs> he goes to leave that night to go to the hotel. And he's like, um, Chris, did you take a part from my car? And I'm like, Oh shit. Sorry about that. Let me go get that. So we, I, by then I had another replacement one, but, Literally, I took the guy's shifter out of his car while he was driving one of my other cars on the track. So that was kind of a thieving Rob Peter for Paul experiences. So the the unwritten fourth rule, do you have PayPal? How tall are you? Do you have PayPal? What kind of car do you drive and do you leave it locked? Yeah. Question for you. Um, Have you won all of the awards there are to win? No. I haven't got a, a I, I've got a, I, the only a, like class win I got was a class C win. And at that race, that was when I did the, uh, the lemon, uh, what was it? The ambulance button, terrible button, terrible ambulance. I did the, the good old, I did a, a cannonball run ambulance. And actually I did it like a week before Brock Gates actually died. So I did a tribute vehicle to a guy that wasn't even dead yet. But, so that one, I actually, so you, I want to, that I wanna, happen uh, then. Because you had a so actually, that, vehicle before he was dead. Yeah. So I, so that race, I, I ended up, that was the first time I won class C and uh, Corey and I, Corey was battling it with us for class C. And then uh, we were going back and I think he lost a wheel on his car. And so I kept slowing down and like 
honking at Corey every time I drove by. And he was about to, I think he wanted, he was so pissed at me. I even stopped, I stopped with him. Oh, hey, I'm sure he loved think? that. I go, oh, look, you're missing a wheel. And I'm all, I got a wheel right here. And he's like, fuck you, Chris. God damn it. He's all getting mad at me. So then uh, when the race was over, all of a sudden at, at the award ceremony, they're all, and the uh, Class C win goes to Chris Overstead and the Wanduits. And then they figured out that it was my 100th entry was that race. And so they're like, so we figured out that you've spent about a hundred and thirty, forty thousand dollars on winning a trophy finally in a class. And I'm like, well, it felt a lot better until you told me that part. So but yeah, I got yeah, I got class C and then I've got I think uh, I've I've got I don't know, probably seven or eight organizers choice. I got a judge's choice that for the limo that time where you did the week. The wheelie going out of the racetrack. That was uh, one of the judges' choices. And then, uh, oh, I got a, I got a trophy for, was a judges' choice for Chris's being a nice guy, trophy. So basically, what happened was the little, uh, the team from Colorado came out to California. Their car broke, and so I gave them uh, one of my cars to use for like five hours, so they at least got track time. And so all of a sudden, uh, there was like I think 19 of them that showed up for this race, and so. On, on, during the award ceremony, they had all of them come up to the stage. Yeah, hey, everybody from Colorado, come up here. All school, so and so, they all come up there. And then all of a sudden, they go, oh, you guys aren't getting a trophy. But Chris is for being a nice guy because he let you drive his car. And they're like, oh. But, yeah, it was kind of that was a funny <laughs> one. They, they, oh, wow. they those poor kids. oh, no, you suck again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was, I think, uh, yeah, I got the uh, – Another time when the the alien probe car, I think I kind of helped them get their uh, the most most screwed or back on track uh, heroic fix. They came in and they had a rod knock going on, and they're like, "Man, we need some rod bearings." And I'm like, I looked at their big giant air filler air cleaner that they had with the aluminum, and I'm like, "You know, you could probably make bearings out of that." And they're like, "Really?" So I I gave them my uh, porta band, and they cut bearings out of the the air intake tube put it on the car and then went back out on track. And then I think they did like enough, they finished the race that day. So I was like, I keep joking what? with, uh, with those guys. I mean, they, they went out for like five laps and they come back and go for five laps and then they go back. And then all of a sudden, uh, at the end they just drove it and ended up finishing. But there was like, I always tease with those guys. I'm all, you guys order me, you owe me a quarter of that trophy. Cause, uh, for your heroic fix was my tools, my idea. And they're like, all right, yeah, yeah, we'll get it. So I'm waiting for them to cut one of their trophies up for me. Yeah, and then I uh, yeah they'll so, use it for they'll probably use it for spare parts or bearings or something you know exactly. <laughs> but no, I don't think Class A. I'll probably never get that one because I'm I don't know I'm not that good of a driver and I don't that's too much commitment and stuff I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, so, yeah. Um, it it I imagine if it comes down to being funny or being you know the fastest car. Yeah, let's go with funny. It uh, it well, took I mean, me I, forever, but I finally scrolled through enough of your Facebook to find the limo, and this is the, uh, only, the 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 one I could find in there. Now, the there is also a picture of it uh, where you've got you know your lovely bride on there, but I don't know if we want to keep this one PG or not. But yeah, there is a, a collection of some of your stuff there. <laughs> the the limo the limo was my first race in lemons. When you when you met that's a Sonoma, I was I, I met looked at so that many thing and I was like, that "What the hell is that thing?" Yeah, the limo was funny because it's like I pulled in and I had it took up the whole top of my car hauler. So basically, when I got to the track, I literally did a lap in the paddock, like so everybody could see it. I was like, ah, "Look what I got!" And then that night, I was like looking, I punched in like racing limo on like Google, and there was like four hundred posts from all these different like forums. <laughs> We're racing against this guy. And we're like, it was hilarious, all that. But it's like, the limo was funny. I mean, the car did a, I could do, what was it, 31 miles per hour on Button Willow with the cruise control on without uh, running out, like, basically drive the whole course. Pretty funny. That without touching the brake. really funny. Oh. Then I, what was it? Oh, there was a girl that was a stunt driver. She was one of the uh, hamsters from the Kia Soul commercials. She was, she drove with me at that race, and she was like a, so I got 30 miles per hour out, and I'm all, I'm going to get 31. So we were, like, battling at who was going to drive it the fastest with the cruise control on. 
but the thing got like 17 miles to a gallon and it would go like and then uh so every time i raced that thing the last hour i put a brand new set of brake pads in it and then i just sent it i was like literally just i was trying to blow it up so like every time uh so i, I heard all this radio chatter from everybody they're like uh, for some reason, the limo is not staying to the right of the track, and he is taking the whole course, and he's doing a 241 on the track, which is pretty, pretty good that's, for us. That's a, actually that's yeah, you're hauling the mail at that point. Yeah, because and it was funny they thought because uh, uh, good old uh, Pete was there with the little killer zombie, and we had the same exact lap times forever, which was like 241s. But they thought maybe that my transponder was on his car or his car was had my transponder because we had the same exact lap times. But we would catch each other at the other parts of the track. But yeah, the, the limo was probably my funnest car to have. But it only fit on button with us. That was the only thing that sucked. But yeah, when I was racing at that, every time I raced it, I saw Miata would basically catch me like every two laps going through the chicane or the S's. <laughs> so they would honk, and then I'd let them pass, and then I just sat right in the middle of the S's going hella slow. So then I saw could basically win the race. So but yeah, so I was always teasing. That's why I called it the rolling chicane limo service. Uh, and that's a great one. That's a, a, a great, uh, you know, because eyesore is good people. Everybody likes eyesore. Oh yeah. I, I've been, they've been there since Altamont. They're great. I love those guys. All right. I am, uh, for those watching on YouTube, I apologize. We have lost Chris and Chrissy and I'm trying to add just a screen of me, Chris and, uh, Tim. And it's fighting me on this cause I'm not very smart. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Ha, I can work around that. There we go. Now we got all of us on there. So, all right. Uh, we're, uh, a few weeks back, we were talking about trackside triumphs. And I'm, I am betraying you a little bit on this one, but it's a really, really funny story. You had to pull an engine out of somebody's back seat. Yeah. So I had one guy... Uh... When a, one of my Hondas, he blew it. He forgot to turn on the fan switch, and he ended up blowing up the motor. And he's like, um, what do I do? And I'm like, well, there's a motor at my house. And he's like, okay. So he him, he was all like a buck 25. Him and his buddy were both about a buck 25. So they both drive like 150 miles to my house. They put the motor in the back seat of his girlfriend's Sentra or Camry or something. She just took, she took the back seat out of it so she could sleep in it at Burning Man. So there was like nothing in the back seat. So, so of course, so they, and basically they they had this, and then they show up back at the track at like, I don't know, it probably took them like four hours. It took them an hour just to get the motor in the car at my house. And I was like, my buddy was like watching them, and he goes, "I'm not going to help him. This is too funny to watch." So they get the motor in the car finally, come out to the racetrack, and then they're sitting there for like ten minutes trying to get this cherry picker to pull the motor out of it. And I'm like. You guys are like the dumbest smart guys because they're like both engineers for somewhere. I'm like, oh, God. So I reached inside the car, grabbed the motor, and like wiggled it out, picked it up, and set it on the ground. I go, okay, now you got to put it in the car. And they're like, they just looked at me like, uh, okay. But yeah, that was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the many uh, crazy uh, engine swaps. Yes, yes. Back, back when, you know, People would actually just spend uh, all night swapping an engine just because. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you though? It's, <laughs> I mean, like that's, that is like the essence of lemons. Like just if you're not greasy or sweaty or completely destroyed at the end of the weekend, you did it wrong. True. <laughs> I was, uh, I was that's like, before be. I knew ever, like before I knew like blizzard and that whole group of people, my, uh, we were walking around the paddock one time and all the guys like blizzard and all their cars are all broken down. And I think my kids were like set six and seven years old at the time. And we're walking by and then uh, the, the kids are looking at the cars. And all, hey, why are these guys working on their cars? And then my son looks at my daughter and goes, uh, cause their cars aren't as good as dad's and their cars suck. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there's like Ryan blizzard and like, uh, all uh, the whole group of them like look at me and they're like, Oh, and like all defeated and stuff. And I was like, I'm like, well, they're not wrong. <laughs> and they're like, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's basically how oh, yeah, I it would have been. It would, if it had the... come from you, they could have like deflected it because it came from a kid. They're like, yeah. You know, oh, kids don't yeah. lie. Damn it. All right, and then I, I was teaching my, 
Yep. I was teaching my kids to, uh, to yell at everybody, don't sh- don't slam gears. The Honda is not a drag car. So every time a, one of my drivers would come in, my kids would barcade the car and go, don't shift hard. It's not a drag car. It's a Honda. And so but all, like, all the arriving drives were getting like taunted by my, my youngins yelling at them. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. Um, so, hey, uh, Chrissy, I know you and Chris had a thing there, but we, we go down to the uh, the questions at the bottom. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, you I judged a whole bunch, you. Chris, in time. We've, I think we've all done at this point, and there's always something that we want to see. What do you want someone to bring that you, you haven't seen yet? I'm trying to... Uh, it's like a hard one. It's like, I mean... I, I still want to try to figure out a way to do a rental car. Like I want to buy it, get a convertible, cage it, and then like race it that whole weekend, and then take the cage out and take it back on Tuesday. And it's like I, I said that on my uh, like lemon story one time, and like I got like I think I, I got like seven or eight people were like, "I'm game if you want to do it," but then I'm like, "It'd be like one of those things you, you could be famous for doing it, but then you couldn't tell anybody you did it." So somebody showed up with a rental car and actually did my little dream. That'd be kind of funny if they actually made it happen. So I feel like you cool. would have to bring a black and gold wrap and, you know, do the Shelby, uh, Hertz, uh, rental, yeah. you know, theme. It'd definitely be like a convertible Mustang, but then it's like, then you're wondering, Oh, I hope this insurance that I get covers it all. If this car gets destroyed. So, or if, you just if park the in a bad destroyed. neighborhood and like, take it to a neighborhood where you've bought a lemons car and leave it there. Yeah. And maybe it goes away. You could just like leave it in anywhere in Oakland, and they could just do it, use it for a takeover, and just burn it up at the end of the night. So, <laughs> sounds like you have the answer here. So why? Yeah. You, why is why is nobody following this lead? I know. I need to get a hold of those people again. So. He hasn't spent any time thinking about this. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. right? That's a pretty good plan. Yeah. Wow. It's like, well, because we and my buddy were, my buddy's actually on the blacklist. They can never get a rent a car ever because we like destroyed so many of them. Because we used to do a, it's called Jeep Speed. Basically, it was an off road racing series, and you had a Jeep Cher- Cherokee XJ. So every time we would do this race, we did like Vegas Torino. So when we were in Vegas, we would rent a Jeep XJ and we put it on the trailer and we used it as a parts vehicle the whole way up from Vegas all the way to Reno. So, so by the time we got to like Reno, it's like we, uh, we we had all these parts that were basically broken on the rent car And then so we basically would take it. We'd try to put what we could back on the car and then return it to Hertz or whatever place we had it. And then my buddy finally got busted for it. So <laughs> it, it that was all bad. Weird. Yeah, that, that also we used to, Yeah, or well, then where we would, uh, we would do pre-runs and we'd rent like a Suburban and we'd just go mobbing through these wookie dudes and stuff and by the time we were done you couldn't open the doors of the car and i think he returned a suburban like that one time so that was pretty bad also so. it's banana shaped now it's great yeah why are the windows broken <laughs> all right uh, when while you're judging uh what do you not want to see any more of stupid femurs <laughs> yes yes Dude, yeah. boring, boring boring beamers there like, you go uh, so annoying yeah just, okay unsolicited endorsement he was not pre-given yeah. that answer anybody yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> did you see that uh, i think it was i think tim was judging with me it was that black one that had the sobrero on top of it it was like a yeah, bunch of yeah. biker guys I went up to them and I like was talking all sorts of shit to them. Then they all stood up and I was like, "Holy shit!" They were like six, seven, six, nine, and they were all like straight up Harley dudes. And I was like, "Oh yeah, your car's great, dude. Have a good weekend." I'm like, we, oh, off. we actually, I remember that Tim and I were judging, and we gave them a good because it was a boring car and it felt like a weak theme. But all of a sudden, when they came into penalty, they all had. Oh yeah. They, the tuxes, the dress, they did the dance. They were like, ah, cha-cha. Yeah, they, 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 yes. Yeah, those so guys they, were great. They, they, ended up, they, they, they got owned it. it. They owned yeah, it. They, it was, they totally it, got it. I was it. like, yes, yes. That's what I love yeah, was when was like, like, those people do that. Like when they come in and change it up and actually do something different, 
then it's great. But it's like some of the people just show up, and I mean, I understand they're just trying to get like all the Miatas from uh, the Flying Miata team out here that basically use Lemons as their training program for doing the 25 hours of Thunder Hill. <laughs> he, he actually sold all of those to a group of college kids, and they call it college yeah. fund racing. And uh, they're getting better. The drivers of those yeah. cars are getting – they're good kids. Uh, but so well, you was, judge. Last time we told them, didn't we okay. tell them last time they had to go spend a hundred dollars at the uh, dollar store to outfit their car so they could race the next day? I, I want to say they did. They showed up with a bunch of glitter and ribbons or something. Like they actually, yeah, yeah, you know, each, they, each car, they each car was a, each car was a different. They had three cars. Each car they themed differently, poorly. Yeah. But there was an effort involved, which which was like. Okay, good on you. We're like, you're not racing unless you come up with something. And they did like one Americana. Well, then one was then like there, it was like they were theme. bargaining their uh, they were bargaining their penalty laps because they wanted to be in the same class as their dads. So parents, the dads were in one car, and they were in the other car. And I'm like, I go. So they were trying to like get the, so they could be in the same one, and so they could race against their parents, I guess, or something. It was kind of funny, but yeah, they're they're finally getting it, but they're pretty uh, useless sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so uh what's your best judging story so the best one i think i i had that video up for days this little miata comes into the penalty box and i, I videotape him as he's coming down at sonoma i hear this clang 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 noise and he pulls into the penalty box and he's got a bumper stuck in his passenger door that's out straight 90 degrees like four feet out the side of the car he goes what did you guys pull me in for? And I'm like, <laughs> and he's, I'm all, hey, get out of the car. So he gets out of the car and make him walk around to the other side. And he's like, holy shit, where'd that come from? I'm all, I go, oh, I don't, no. I, you were on the track. I wasn't, I don't know where it came from. And he's like, oh. And so basically we wrestled it, pulled the bumper out, and then he went back out on track. And then the guy whose bumper it was, he didn't even come looking for it till like the end of the day. It was like it was out of an RX-7 or something. It was uh, Owen something. I forgot his name. But he showed up at like 5 o'clock going, um, do you guys have a bumper here? I'm like, yeah, it's up there. So, but yeah, that was a good one. Uh, and uh, yeah, by I, the I way, we people. know you made contact. Why didn't you come see us? I didn't yeah. know anybody. I love mess. Like my favorite, like my, uh, I always have people do the, the idol challenge. Well, the guys that are speeding in the paddock, I'll say, okay, now get your left, your uh, your right foot, and you're gonna tuck that against the seat, and I'll make them idle on out of the clutch in first gear, and I'll make them idle all the way out around the paddock, and then go back out on the track without touching the gas pedal. So that one always uh, gets people paranoid. They're like, Right, what? writing that one down because that's one of my I I get really upset about speeding in the paddock. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That is great. Yeah. yeah. That is. I'm all east again. Yeah. Those idle of challenge. you who wrote America. Get ready for that. Just saying. Oh, man. <laughs> well, luckily, it's a small paddock. Yeah. Four miles from tip to tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, I mean, you do it at Thunder Hill, and it's like, it'll take them 15 minutes to go around the paddock before they can go out. So. It's supposed to. That's why it's a yeah. speed limit. Yeah. Button Willow, it's a huge paddock. Slow down. Don't care. Yeah. Yeah, don't care. Don't mm -hmm. care. So Chris, you uh, do you do socials? Where can folks find you with your like adventures um, and misadventures? My kids actually started a Instagram page for Buttercup, so that's a uh, Buttercup the Racehorse on Instagram. So I've been doing that one a little bit, and we go to for all the car shows and cars and coffee and stuff like that, and then just just go to old normal uh, Facebook for everything else. And then my uh, my business is Extreme Motorsports at Yahoo at dot biz, I think. Yeah, extreme motorsports dot biz is our uh, shop, and then we have a we have an Instagram page with that, with all our different bills we have and all that other stuff. So, is Buttercup your favorite car? Yeah, it's like my wife calls it my mistress because my wife <laughs> hates the car. She just absolutely hates it, and so like my manager at the shop hates the car. He's all, "You can't leave that down at the shop anymore," and I'm like, "All right, fine." <laughs> So like, uh, yeah, so it's like, and it's just, it's such a, it's funny. Cause it's like my daughter and I love taking the car out. We go all over. Like she just got her permit. So she's my duber. She basically drives me around everywhere. So 
she's brought, she's driven Buttercup the other day, and it's uh, it's eleven feet from her nose to the end of the bumper in the front of the car, and she's oh, like on awesome. a booster seat. To, yeah, so she's driving around, and like we went to Good Guys this weekend, and she's all game for letting people climb up on the roof and take pictures and stuff like that. So she has fun with it also. But yeah, that car is probably my. I mean, having a street legal lemons car is like the best thing ever. You can just take Agreed. it wherever you want and mess with people. Agreed. But it's like a. Well, I was also the caretaker for the upside down Camaro for like the last two years. So it's like I would take the upside down Camaro or I would take Buttercup to like all the local cars and coffees and stuff like that. Just to, you know, if you stay local, it's like you see the same cars all the time. It gets kind of boring. So uh, <laughs> like this. So this Sunday, I might drive over to Sierra College and take Buttercup up there to their little uh, cars and coffee they have. Oh, you know oh, they yes. will love that. Yeah, it's Love about that. 60 miles away, so it should, should it hasn't broke down lately, so. Don't it's never broke. Like it, yeah. But no, it's a, yeah, the Buttercup's funny because it's like we were, uh, my son's uh, an Eagle Scout, and one of his best buddies just got Eagle, and all of a sudden his friend calls up, he's all, hey, can your dad bring Buttercup so we can take pictures on him? And I'm like, sure. So then the wife had to climb into the passenger seat and uh, <laughs> go to go to this meeting and I got a, what was it? I got 13 Boy Scouts on top of that car for that picture. It's pretty funny. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what's next? What, what are you doing next? Um, next race, next probably, judging. What's, what's, what's going on? Next judge. I'm, I'm at the button willow next month. And then I'm hoping, uh, November I'm bringing a buttercup out for, uh, we're going to do like, a. We're going to dress up as knights, and I think I, I'm hoping to get one of my little Hondas going, and I'm going to dress that like a dragon and have the buttercup with the knights chasing the dragon. So That's fantastic. That out. Awesome. Are we going to see but Are we going to see your daughter in a race car? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I, it'd probably be like March or something. It's like I don't understand like Burnell's dads where their kids got their license the day before a lemons race, and they threw them on a racetrack. I thought <laughs> that was the craziest thing ever. It's like I couldn't imagine – throwing my kids out to the wolves like that when they just got their license. So she'll, she'll go out there. My son's not into racing, but my daughter says so she'll be into it. So there's, there's wolves out on that racetrack, but a lot of those wolves, you make a loud noise, they run and they hide. It's a couple of angry chihuahuas. Uh, and then a couple of like, you know, giant dogs that just don't care. So they're just lumping around and I like the, looking for a place to take a nap. You know, I like taking the gas caps off of the cars and the, during the yellow laps, and then I throw the gas cap at the driver. The <laughs> <laughs> battery uh, just their, yeah. I used to do that in uh, road rate or like on stop and go traffic, take people's gas caps off and throw it at them. <laughs> um, Things you can only get or, away with when you're over six foot. I'm, I'm yeah. not getting away with that. I'm getting beat up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or you open up their try back this at home, door. folks. Yeah, you open up their back passenger door. That's a good one, also. <laughs> wow. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not you. You do whatever you want. If you're listening, yeah. don't, don't, don't do that. Oh, I think that should be our safety tip, actually. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, pretty sure this yeah. is not a thing that most people should practice. There promote. you go. Just just the tip. Don't 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 take people's gas caps in traffic while you're moving. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, all right. <laughs> Anything else around the horn? Chris, thank you. This is <laughs> This has been great. I've I've been there for some of this stuff, being a bit of a transplant, but I, I did not know how far back and how deep this goes because that is some truly epic stuff. Well, it's like I I was the one that started the whole people's first with the excavator and stuff. So like uh, that was some of the my very first lemons race was at Altamont, and it's about a half a mile track. And so like uh. So I talked to Jay and I'm like, can I bring a, I'll do the people's curse. And he's like, all right, what are you going to bring? And I got a bobcat with a concrete breaker. And so, uh, we're on the track. And then, uh, so Saturday going right. So Sunday morning, I, uh, Saturday we're driving and this guy in this crown Vic, like hit my little Honda like four times in one lap, like destroyed the whole little car. It wasn't done. It was done for the race. So then when I showed up on Sunday morning with the bobcat and the concrete breaker, I went over to their paddock and I caved their trunk in with the concrete 
breaker. <laughs> and then as I'm as I'm doing this, Jay sticks his head inside the bobcat and says, Mr. Overset, will you please go sit in your corner and not play with these people right now? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, Jay. So I raise the height. And then I, and then I, as they says that, I, I hit that concrete breaker like two more times. And he like looks at me. And I'm all, sorry. And then I picked it up. And then I drove over to my paddock. And then lo and behold, those guys got the people's curse on their Camaro. And I, uh, I think I broke their carburetor with the concrete breaker. I was, I was at that race because they cut the yeah. roof off and kept racing, and they were still being tools. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a Camaro. I think that was the second one. That was when we uh, – with the excavator when we ripped the roof off of it. Yeah. Chris so, was this yeah. close to joining me for that race. He's forever grateful that he didn't because it was awful. So happy. That would have been yeah. terrible. And the, yeah. the race was actually great, <laughs> but the, the, the guy that I was partnered with, it just went bad. But, yes – Oh, that was, that's that hilarious. Yes, I, re- I, I remember that Camaro because uh, then they just cut the roof off and kept going. There was a yeah. hearse. Somebody out there had a hearse. They I was, was trying to find that hearse for years. I was like, <laughs> I wanted to bring that thing back. Yes. So. I remember he was pulling in every about 10 to 20 minutes and just changing tires because he was running all yeah. seasons. And he, just, he was yeah, melting was- them. Yeah. That was awesome. That was great. Altima was the crazy times. Ah. All right. So we go from talking about the past to talking about the future. What are we doing next week? No idea. Sorry. Chris. Eh? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. My microphone, I was trying to figure out where it was off. Boss. It's totally fine. No, no, no. Okay. We uh, promised a Road America preview and we're going to deliver that. We're going to figure out how to, how to record it. So it is ready for you to listen while you're towing if you're going there. Yes. And we've been wanting Chris on this show for a while and we just have not been able to get our schedules mixed made up. So when he said he had time, we jumped on it. So, uh, no regrets. Hope it was worth it. Yes. It, I think it was worth it. Uh, it, you know, I think everyone else agrees. That was a ton of fun. Thank you so much. And, uh, if nobody's got anything else, we'll, uh, we'll hit the old outro here. I, I just want, I just All want right. to say this. If you are at a West coast event, Go and see Chris Overzet, whether he's running some crappy car or he's judging. Hell of a lot of fun to hang out with. Great guy. Super friendly. Go and have a chat with him. You won't regret it. And and because at Buttonwillow, it's going to be us, me, you, and Jim are judging that one. We have a great judges theme, but we're going to keep it under wraps until everyone comes to see it. We've just got to order those costumes on Amazon. Uh, so if you have to come chat with him in penalty, well, boo on you. But if you have the chance to talk to him, not in penalty, definitely worthwhile. So I got a new, uh, pit ride for that race too. So. <laughs> there we go. So. I'll, I'll race it with my skateboard. We won't, we totally won't do that. Jay. Don't, don't pretend we say yeah. that. Well, I've, I've ordered. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you will join us in the world of driving, racing, building, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. You can go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text pictures of your junk to me at 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, and even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again. Until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down. 